Hello and welcome back to the channel. So you join me today as we refit the Vantrue 4K dash cam to the GS1300. To help with this installation we'll be using the Symark Bike Parts BMW Universal dash cam bracket. This bracket was a design concept that I thought of. I took the bracket design to Mark Houghton at Symark Bike Parts. Mark then fine-tuned the design and this is the end result. And I think you'll agree, it's quite a neat solution. The idea behind it is to keep the camera behind the screen to keep the lens clean free of bugs and debris. This bracket is now available for sale and is in production. You can buy this from Mark's website from simarkbikeparts.co.uk. Please check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. Symark stock a lot of innovative parts, British made for many brands of different motorcycles. So let's get started with fitting the dash cam back onto the GS1300 BMW. So, in order to get the cables to the right place for the camera, I route the dashboard controls for the dash cam, which I haven't really decided where they're going yet, but I've got a few ideas. I've had to remove the beak. I'm also going to have to remove these panels here on the side so that I can see where the routing goes for the cables. And I may have to remove the center pad and the tank bracket just to make sure that the cabling goes in nice and neatly. These aren't difficult to remove guys. There's lots of tutorials online. Um, I think life's a ride and a bike thing have got uh, quite detailed uh, instructions on how to take the panels off on the GS but they really aren't difficult so this is the beak off the GS off mine off the 1300 and all that holds this on is a series of popper clips down the sides and two push rivets on the front it's as simple as that so if you remember back to the 1250s guys this was an absolute nightmare to get off so uh, yeah, big improvement there. Definitely a big improvement in the way these things are built and they're put together. They're a lot simpler to work on, a lot easier to work on. And also, one of the big bonuses, most of these screws are all the same. So you can't get them wrong. Whereas on the 1250, it was like playing screw lottery. Um, unless you took a photograph of every single one when you took it off. So... What we've done at the back here, I've tidied all the wiring up at the back. Um, I've made some measurements of this plate here. So there's some tangs here that are in the seat that clip the alarm in. I've made some measurements of them. I'm gonna cut a piece of um, black um, PVC acrylic, I don't know what it is. Um, and I'm gonna cut that to size so it fits in that area. So I've got a nice firm base for the uh, dash cam to be um, stuck to, to adhered to with the 3M tape. And um, it'll also allow it to be easily removed should I need to access these cables underneath. So that'll be next guys, I'm gonna make that plate. So the first issue I came across on the new 1300GS was where to mount the video control unit. As the bike didn't come fitted with an alarm, I saw the opportunity to use the aperture where the alarm was fitted. After a few measurements and a bit of head scratching, I proceeded to make a bracket that would clip into where the uh, OE BMW alarm fits. This would provide a nice secure mounting for the Vantru video controller. I really don't know what you guys with alarms fitted are going to do if you want to fit a dash cam on your bikes because there really isn't a lot of space. So on the screen now are pictures of the bracket that I made. This is a piece of 4mm ABS plastic that was taken from an old black number plate. Um, I'll put all the dimensions on there of what you need to make this bracket. It just clips in and provides a nice flat base that you can use a good quality double sided tape to stick the uh, Vantru video controller to. Now you will see at the end now this got a lot of head scratching 
I rechecked the angles that I cut on it. I thought they were going to match the inside of the uh, aperture where it fits in. <laughs> and without realising, after checking and checking, the angles are not the same. They're, they're unequal angles on the inside of the BMW plastic. So that's what makes it look a little bit awkward. So don't worry about that. It all fits okay, it does the job, and it's exactly what you need to fit the dash cam video controller to. And there you go, that's the Vantru unit fitted into the back of the bike. Plenty of clearance, nice route for cables, just the job. Rightio, I'm just going to explain the cable route on the uh, on the van true on the GS1300. Uh, very tight for room on this bike, but um, I've managed to get it through anyway. So this is the cable that needs to go from front to rear. It's for the uh, handlebar controls, that plug, and then the uh, the front 4K camera. So from there, the route follows cross underneath the cross brace when that's fitted again I'll show you that when it's back together follows down through and down that side there following the OE wiring loom across the back of the shock absorber it does miss the shock it's not nowhere near it and out the other side and then you have to make a loop of cables under the tank there you see that so then goes out from there, follows the loom round and up the side of the frame on this side, on the left hand side, the side of the air box and exits down there. You can see where the cables are coming out down there. The camera the cable then follows this route round here in the OE containment round to the front pod. So this is where I've fitted the control module for the dash cam. Just sits nicely behind the clutch master cylinder. Fixed on with some double sided gel tape. Very secure, nice and tight and very neat. Also the cable follows all the OE cables from the handlebars down as I've explained earlier they all follow the same route as the cables on the bike so there's nothing getting trapped there's nothing getting stuck anywhere and uh, this module also has the microphone in it for audio recording should you enable that or not so as i mentioned previously about getting the cable through for the camera it's not the cable that doesn't fit through, it's the plug on the end of the camera. Now, all you have to do is loosen off these bolts that hold on the luggage carriers. There's then, once these luggage carriers are just hanging down under here, they're quite safe, they won't fall off. All you do is you leave them suspended underneath Take out the one last fixing for the rack, slide it back ever so slightly, and when you slide it back, you then get enough room to get your plug through. You can then slide it all back through once you've got the plug through for the cable and bolt it all back together. Again, not a difficult job. Very, very simple on these bikes. Most of the fixings, I know I keep saying it, but BMW have really done their own work on these things to make them easy to strip down. So in terms of routing cable for your dash cam, it comes out underneath your sat nav mount here and runs down the original route which follows the nav mount cabling into the back of the radar shield. Now I have installed an easy can on my bike and that's where I get the switch live from to supply the dash cam to turn it on and off. You don't have to use an easy cam. If you look here on the GS, 
there's a fuse box. Underneath that you'll find a red and blue wire. That red and blue wire is a switched live. Now I'm not telling you how to tap into that but you know you can find a switch live under there. And one of the other reasons I used an easy can is because I wanted to fit an additional brake light on my bike. There'll be more on that in a future video. That's a little uh, LED light. You'd be surprised, very cheap, but very effective. And I just think to have that extra brake light at the back is just another way of reinforcing a little bit more safety. And yep, that's the extent of the strip down you need to do. Luckily, on the new GS, it's not that bad. There's actually, as silly as it looks, there's only about 20 minutes work there to strip it down and another 20 minutes to put it back together. It's very, very easy to take to bits as this bike. However, a fellow YouTube creator has got a brilliant tutorial that shows how this is done. So the next video clip is from Nick at Life's A Ride. I will also leave a link in the description to Nick's channel. He's got some really interesting stuff on there based on the GS1300. Please be sure to visit Nick's channel and give him a like and give him a subscribe. And I'd just like to say a big thank you to Nick for allowing me to use this footage. Cheers, Nick. So first job is to remove the screen. Um, you need your key to then disappear to the shed without it. Um, so we'll remove the screen. Click out. Anyway, remove the screen. Carefully does it. So you don't scratch it. Screwdriver, by the way, is a fake on. French. Guaranteed for life. Okay, here we go. These bits come off. Easy. They're going to be uh, reprinted in some kind of carbon fibre crap in no time. Two bolts. One, two. Careful with this one, because everything drops. One, two. Don't let this drop down on your TFT. Probably better off putting a cloth over your TFT because that will really piss you off. A useless navigation system ruining your TFT. Not a good day out. Now, bikes on, into menu, screen up. This bit feels loose. You'll go looking for screws, but there aren't any. It's on two clips. Get your fingers underneath it here and here and just lift it. Like that. Don't hit it into there because you'll damage it. And then out it comes. And there's just two tiny clips there and there. So hence the prying again with the fingers. Uh, up. So, this is the 304 stainless steel Cymark dash cam mount. Lovely piece of kit, very sturdy, it's got captive nuts in it and it's very very simple to fit not at all difficult to fit very very easy so all you need to do is remove the two screws that secure your nav mount at the top 
Before you pull the screws out, push the nuts out of the plastic mount at the back and save those. Put them to one side. Replace the washers and then replace them with the two supplied extended stud um, cap screws that, that comes with the bracket. Torx 20s I believe they are. Nip the two screws up into the captive studs, being careful not to over tighten it of course. That's it, job done. Really simple. Here's some on the road footage of the Vantro F1 4K camera fitted to the GS1300. So the first clip was taken on a really bright sunny day. The sun was really low in the sky and when you were facing into the sun it was very very bright. But this is a good example of how the tinted screen does help in this situation in filtering the, uh, the sunlight and allowing the camera to focus correctly when it's overexposed. For me, another big advantage of having the camera behind the screen is it does always keep the lens clean on the camera. So if you stop anywhere and there's a few bugs on your screen, it's just easy to wipe the screen over. So in a moment, when we turn right at this roundabout, we'll be facing directly into the sunlight. This is an excellent example of how it deals with the sunlight through a tinted screen. And although the picture is not perfect, it is still very legible, you can still see what's going on. Whereas if it wasn't for that tint in the screen, you'd just have a big fireball in the front of the camera at this point. Next up we've got a particularly dull and overcast day, which I'm sure you can see it's dealing with very well to say it's looking through a dark tinted screen. And I know it doesn't look it through the camera but I can assure you this was a particularly dull and dark and dingy day. But at least it was dry, so why not? Let's get out and have a ride. I'm quite happy with the focal point of the camera, even considering that the screen does move up and down electrically. It's still, even when there's a, there is an obstruction in the camera, still gives a very clear view of what's going on and after all it is a dash cam we're not vlogging with this it's just something for your own safety Now we'll move on to what is a normal average UK day. Um, temperatures were about 13, 14 degrees on this day, but quite clear skies, bit of cloud, but average, just an average day, really nice lighting. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's performing flawlessly. They really are a good system, these Vantrum systems. For the price point, you just need to keep your eyes open on Amazon because sometimes they're on offer. Um, I think the full retail price is £320 but as this one of mine it can be I obtained this one for about £184. Which for that sort of price point for a 4K camera you can't go wrong. You're getting 30 frames per second 
uh, 1080p and 4K front and rear. It's a bargain, a great piece of kit. And not to mention the great parking mode that it has as well. Now that works, if anybody touches your bike while it's switched off, it'll start recording. So, I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining me on this video guys. Um, I hope it's been useful and I hope you find it somewhat interesting. If you do, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And I'd just like to add that none of the products mentioned in this video were sponsored. And finally, I'd just like to thank Mark Houghton at Simart Bike Parts for his efforts and his help with producing the front bracket for the GS. And if you'd like to pick up a bracket to make your dash cam installation a little bit easier, I will leave a link in the description to the Simark website. Coming up next on NJW1967 will be my review of the Insta360 X4 camera used on my GS1300 while I'm running it in. Be sure to join me for that. Bye for now.